Yes, welcome back. You're still watching Daybreak right here on Citizen TV. We continue the news review where we, took, we take a look at the issues behind the headlines. One of the big headlines today is on the front page of the Standard. Who is next on DPP list? Quite a number of individuals have been listed here, some facing uh, fraud uh, charges. Uh, but the big question is, uh, yes, this DPP has come out and uh, like the knight in shining armor and is doing what we've not seen previously, uh, is out to save Kenya as it would seem. But the big question is, is this real? Are you feeling it? Or is it just cosmetic before? Because uh, uh, we've not seen any conviction yet. We've just seen people being arraigned, more people being arraigned. They spend two nights in custody, they get bail eventually, and they're out. I, are you optimistic that this time round, with this uh, new uh, Director of Public Prosecutions, that we are actually going to see convictions, Madam Speaker? Yes, we will see convictions. I think uh, judiciary should ask itself, is, uh, are you part of the process? Do you want to see change in your country? Do you want to see, because it is now them, uh, everything as he, he finalizes the file and it heads to court. So the courts must also start now because Kenyans will come for the courts. Mm -hmm. They will start feeling, you are frustrating us. If the president is doing this and the DPP is doing this, why are you not doing this? So, uh, but I, I believe uh, the Chief Justice said he has put in now uh, uh, guidelines of how to deal with it. So let us see. And I think one of the things also the DPP is trying to ensure is when the file gets to court, it is not a place where you do a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, witnesses and all. It is a case that you can see through and say this is a case that just, it just needs judgment. It they depends the, on how, the wheels of what type of judgment. turn very slowly and yeah. uh, that's part of the apprehension that Kenyans mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very nice and easy seeing uh, uh, people being arraigned in court, uh, for these charges but uh, if we just take a look at uh, a good example of a corruption uh, uh, case uh, which involved the city council and that uh, cemetery land saga mm. uh, it took over 10 years for us to get a conviction yes uh, there are people behind bars now but it took 10 years kenyans had already given up uh, don't you think that we will experience that kind of lethargy at some point yes the dpp has handed uh, uh, bundled people in court but then it takes another five ten years before we see a conviction Mm. Don't you think that that in itself even defeats the purpose of this whole uh, fight against corruption? I think what I'm watching very closely is to see when the actual cases start. But I think what is important, I know that there are many cases here where the DPP may get convictions, but there will be also others where you won't get convictions. In the past, and I'm a victim personally, was a case where the, the matter has been taken to court, but all the witnesses of the prosecution said Gladys Shelley was innocent. So why was that case in court in the first place? Mm -hmm. The witness statements were sufficient for them to say we have no case. But they still tried to prosecute mm -hmm. it. But there are also other cases that I've seen where the DPP, for the first time we are seeing the DPP saying the money landed here, it moved to this bank, mm -hmm. whose signatories are the following, mm -hmm. at this time, at this hour, and so on, and they listed. For me, when I look at that, I say, for the first time, we are not alleging corrupt. I mean, we are, mm -hmm. we are seeing movement of money. In other times, there's been allegations of corruption on people, and yet they, they, there's no trace of any impropriety of any money moving. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing a little more detail in some of the cases. I'm very fascinated about this because I always say, you know, I always said that one day I'll write a book about the war on corruption mm -hmm. when it completely fails and when it hasn't. And so a lot depends on what are the... I, uh, witness statements that they already have because remember they have to file the witness statements mm -hmm. in advance so you know we know with precision what the witness will say in court even before the prosecution is, is that an indication sets. that the process will take shorter you can tell you can almost yeah. tell because if you look at um, i did one study a course about uh, ensuring that you get a conviction rate I, I mean a 90 percent conviction rate on any cases and the u.s is one of the best in doing that as a prosecutor you are required there to actually show that you, you have the following documents you have the fo and you actually stand a chance of winning the case before you even begin to, mm -hmm. process, to process it. it. So this will be actually the acid test for the DPP. He has just begun his work. He hasn't won it yet. Mm -hmm. We will look at it and after we evaluate, in fact, I hope that it's public because I'd love to see what are the documentations mm -hmm. presented. And believe me as a lawyer, in 10 minutes after looking at documentation, I can tell you whether they'll get a conviction or not. Yes. The rest of it, they're wasting the court's time, asking for adjournments, applying uh, for preliminary points, yes. and so on. And, and if, the, if, the, if, the, if the, the, and I think the, 
the court process now has new new guidelines where they have the pre-trial. Mm -hmm. You can actually deci decide at the pre-trial stage whether this is a waste of time, court's time, or, or, not. or not. And I think if the court mm -hmm. actually utilized that pre-trial process, mm -hmm. then that is where the, the win on corruption is. It's not even about allocating more judges. The, the, it's the, about using yes. that method that they've already installed. Yes. The, the greatest concern is the fact that uh, President Huru Kenyatta only has four years uh, before he actually retires. Uh, he is one president who is keen on fighting corruption. If at all the regime changes and someone else comes and maybe this is not their priority, and a case like this uh, that we're seeing here takes five, ten, years for us to get a conviction. Don't you think that it will defeat the purpose? That will just have people being arraigned and then released on bail and then eventually nothing happens? Justice delayed is justice denied. So really I think you know the war now turns or the, the our focus now turns to the judiciary and I think it's up to the judiciary now to help us win this war against corruption. And again uh, I would want to agree that if you look at the cases that are now appearing, especially the cases that are coming from the counties this blatant impunity. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, for instance, seen documents myself where it is so clear if you went to court, there's no, no other, you know, <laughs> likelihood but a conviction. Like a case where I was shown where land, uh, I mean, where a road could only have been built, you know, over an earth road could only have been built over tarmac, an existing tarmac, or over water. And there is uh, money and there is clear transaction. Mm -hmm. Now, assuming such a case goes to court, mm -hmm. really, I think you need Jesus Christ to come and blind us mm -hmm. to see that this is, an, this is not a case of, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. of, of theft. It's not even, I, I don't even want to say corruption. Yeah. Sometimes we couch things so nicely. It's just plain old theft. Mm -hmm. You are just a thief. If you take money and don't do the work you are supposed to have done, you could as well have just gone and robbed people in a bank. Mm -hmm. So really, and there are cases, in fact, we were the other day, um, uh, the, the ESCC summoned me because I was writing about my own county on, on issues of corruption on mm -hmm. my Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, you know, the way people are complaining about uh, alleged corruption in Homer Bay, really ESCC needs to do something and find out if this is rumor mongering or it is actually true. And when they summoned me and were telling me some of the things that they have in Homer Bay, I'm like, really? And they say it's so blatant, like mm -hmm. in a case where they are saying that there was money that was used for training uh, MCS, and when they followed in the hotel, the hotel said, no, we've never seen any we've MCA train. <laughs> we've never hosted. So yeah. really, what are you waiting for? You are waiting for Jesus or who well, to tell you that the training didn't take place? Well, the hope by Kenyans is uh, that uh, these uh, arraignments that we've seen actually end up with convictions, that we actually see people going behind bars for the theft that we see uh, of public resources. Who is next on DPP list? That's a headline on the standard. Let's now move to Parliament where also allegations of major corruption uh, have also come out. Moturi calls for probe into bribery claims in Parliament. Embarrassed by claims of blatant bribery within its ranks, the leadership of the National Assembly has now been forced into action to save face. Speaker Justin Moturi has instructed House Clerk Michael Silai to write to the MPs who openly spoke against the vice to provide the required information to the Powers and Privileges Committee of the House. Uh, this claims of bribery within Parliament are not new. Yes, uh, committees of parliament have always been uh, accused of uh, being uh, avenues for rent seeking. Now, this time around, we saw a report that was so dear to Kenyans shot down. And the first allegation is that members of the National Assembly were receiving as little as 10,000 shillings to actually do this. Are you shocked that uh, this is happening in parliament? You are a senator. <laughs> well, I will not say I'm shocked, but I would say that. Um 10,000? I have never had in peace. Yeah, 10,000. Yeah, it's usually more money. Of course, yes. I mean, <laughs> that one will shock me. So I don't know whether it's well, rumors or yeah. it's true because 10,000? No. But anyway, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue and, and I think I'll take it very broadly because I know I have my sisters here mm -hmm. who will talk about it deeply. I would say I would want to see Parliament do exactly what the President is doing. The Parliamentary Service Commission must relook, really not just at the MPs, because the only problem is we, we, we just focus MPs, MPs. We focus on everything that happens in Parliament, mm -hmm. both on the staff side, everywhere. You want a clean Kenya? 
we have to start there. Mm -hmm. The day we will clean parliament and we'll just have members like Honorable Mili and uh, many others. By the way, there are very few who do that, eh? mm -hmm. who come in and bring this. Uh, but you'll find members taking, and when they go on the floor of the house, they will still say what they wanted to say. Mm -hmm. So it is just a game sometimes. So, so the, the, the money changing hands within the precincts of parliament is not uh, something shocking. It's something that has been happening for years. Well, very few members believe in that. Many members have their dignity and have what they want to achieve. Because mm -hmm. when you bring a report, don't forget, maybe it's a report of my region. So there's no way, even if you bring those money, I will still speak on what I wanted to say. Yes. For example, if it is sugar, surely, if you find those ones who are from the sugar belt running away, then there's a problem. And in fact, it's most members of uh, parliament from coming from the sugar belt region, uh, are the ones who complained about uh, actually that the ones who uh, made these allegations of bribery. Uh, Honorable Chole, you said that uh, you are ready to debate that report. Yes. Uh, you had even <laughs> points and even underlined a few lines here and there. You are ready to contribute in the yes. House, but then things changed. Yes. Uh, I think uh, I'm, a, I'm a new legislator, so of course I'm still learning a lot in parliament. But uh, I'd come into the country that day mm -hmm. and I was very I got the report I read it I highlighted parts and I said and I was so clear that uh, for me the report I was clear that the report was supposed to do one thing most importantly mm -hmm. Kenyans wanted to know was the sugar contaminated or not, not contaminated yes is the sugar we have on our shelves safe or not and did any sugar come in there were two, two sets of mm -hmm. sugar that we were talking about I was there, I had clarity on that. There was the sugar that came in during the duty-free window. Mm -hmm. That sugar was, came in legitimately. But was it contaminated or not contaminated? Then there is the contraband sugar that came into the country illegally. Mm -hmm. That means came through our porous borders. Is that in our shelves? Is it contaminated or not contaminated? Number two, is there a, what method is it that we are going to take to ensure that that sugar is in fact destroyed and removed from the shelves before we even begin to investigate who was culpable. What happened is when I read the report, it had several recommendations. Mm -hmm. And I remember clearly that recommendation one, which was recommending that the contaminated sugar be immediately destroyed, mm -hmm. and two, uh, that uh, the, uh, the, this be established. The me and and uh, that uh, recommend that they establish measures to ensure that uh, contaminated sugar never comes into the country again and is never in our shelves. And I remember there was the last recommendation where they said that um, the, the government chemist report had clearly stated that the sugar was in fact mm -hmm. contaminated. And the, the recommendation, the committee had recommended that there be a second uh, a, a independent test yeah, although I think the one for the government chemist should be sufficient, mm -hmm. but a second test to reconfirm mm -hmm. whether, uh, to just confirm that the sugar is, that there was that contamination. For me, those three recommendations were the best. All the others, I was going to move to, re to delete amendments. the other recommendations. You were ready to move amendments. To move amendments. I, I, and then there was parts where they made recommendations on tax evasion and so on. And I said, no one asked the committee to investigate about tax evasion. Mm -hmm. That is the job of KRA. So we were not talking about tax here. We we're talking about poisonous mm -hmm. sugar that is on our shelves but and may end up in our bodies. None of this uh, happened. Uh, the debate was never... The debate, I was it never shocked was. because then I never got a chance to speak. Uh, and then the debate completely went on a different trajectory. And no one was looking at the report point by point in the discussions. People eventually just, uh, the mood became... Do you hear anything, did you hear anything about uh, money changing hands? I heard about it after. Mm -hmm. the, 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 after the, the, that particular session. But even then I told myself, if anybody, if the CS read this report, why would you bribe anyone? Mm -hmm. There was nothing actually incriminating him. Nothing mm -hmm. was going, it, the, what it actually said about the CS is, is that there should be further investigations mm -hmm. to establish. By the DCI and the ESC. Yes, on that if there were any actions mm -hmm. in which the, it's, so the, if I was a CS, why would I bribe anyone okay. for that report? That report, even if it was adopted, would not have affected any CS. Did money change hands? Uh, do, do you think, uh, did you encounter anywhere where there was uh, exchange of money? Well, uh, unfortunately, I was waiting for the report on uh, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And when it didn't come, I had an engagement in my constituency. So unfortunately, I was not in Parliament on Thursday. Mm -hmm. But I can speak to you from uh, the day before I left and uh, from my experience having been in Parliament before. There was already so much lobbying 
and uh, which involved changing uh, well i didn't see the i hands. didn't see the money changing hands but there was a lot of lobbying to bring down the report mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, i personally was called uh, to bring down the report On what basis? without without uh, uh, money uh, you know changing hands mm -hmm. but i can tell you that from my experience having been in parliament what normally happens and i'm shocked that uh, honorable elachi is actually surprised about alleg allegations of uh, people being bribed uh, 10,000. Maybe because uh, Senate, uh, when <laughs> we're in Senate, maybe that didn't happen. The, the, but the I saw it bigger, in the... the <laughs> I saw no, 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 no. Senate the is a little is bit a different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I was in the ninth <laughs> parliament, I, I mean, I was shocked. Somebody one day actually walked up to me and said, you know, we can give you 5K. <laughs> <laughs> I almost slapped him, you know. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? So, and so then I can give you 5K to change yes. this. So that's when I realized that actually people are given money. Mm. But I also saw one time, again in the ninth parliament, because those days we used to, there was a place where you used to queue when an issue was very contentious and it was a bit hidden from you know the public. So while people were on the queue, people were literally being given and cash. That one you saw it. And they were being given as we were walking. Mm -hmm. So is there a likelihood that people were given money? Possibly, but I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And again, unfortunately, it's, think, not, all members, it's not all members of yes. parliament. Yeah. Uh, it's usually some members of parliament. Mm -hmm. Even when we are doing elections of Yala, mm -hmm. that happened. Oh, 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 yes. oh, that was, Yala, was, do you, do that was even worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you people think were given problem? money. People mm -hmm. were telling me, their members who even told me, they were given 50,000. I to remember them way. to vote a certain way. Do you way. think this probe will actually come out of something? Uh, what I can say is I, I don't is see why uh, the speaker is saying Muturi calls uh, for probing to bribery claims in parliament. It had been said before. Mm -hmm. Let me say this and I'm saying this knowing that my name is on a list that was sent to ESCC of Agriculture Committee. Yes. I do not understand why we have not been called, why we mm -hmm. have not been investigated, why we have not been charged. Mm -hmm. Because we are joking. If there are any allegations of abuse, and personally I've said I'm willing to be one of the sacrificial lambs. Mm -hmm. Whether I'm called rightfully or wrongfully, mm -hmm. I will have my day in court. Mm -hmm. But once a matter has been taken to the ESCC, it needs to be dealt with. So mm -hmm. if uh, Muturi is serious, he should tell us first where that uh, report that was taken about the last parliament mm -hmm. of the agriculture committee same committee again by the way yes mm -hmm. that's why me i never went back to that committee because i noticed people did not come here to deal with issues of agriculture <laughs> and fisheries it was rent seeking it was basically rent seeking mm -hmm. wow. so i said me i'm not going back to that committee again Wahiga and Mora, we need to deal with it once and for all Wahiga Mora but also, will be sitting uh, down with Jeremy Kadango, Mombasa, veteran politician to discuss this issue about the conduct of members <laughs> of parliament and that session is becoming in a short while Be just to say we need to wrap up this discussion yes madam speaker so i have my members who are picked by ESCC and they have been called just because of going uh, into a committee in mombasa and one of them uh, well just woke up and say we were supposed to receive more money how mm -hmm. come it is just this and so <laughs> ESCC picked it and they are now being called one oh. by one so maybe they'll come back to the agricultural committee very sure. interesting oh, well Honorable unfortunately your time is up uh, and so we need to wrap up this i'll give you each uh, a moment uh, about 30 seconds or so for your final comments but uh, for madam speaker there's a headline about you this morning and oh, you to no. take over house of <laughs> ex-mayor i have no That's on idea. page 10 of the standard and uh, it's this special report by the standard uh, on governors houses mansions uh, for example, there's a headline, 130 million shilling house for Kingi, but none for his deputy. Hunt for land to build county homes. Uh, rift uh, residents stand in the way of palatial residences. Uh, the residents demand that that money should be used for other issues. Uh, but uh, Speaker Lachi, you could comment on this. Have you seen this headline? It talks <laughs> about you taking over uh, what used to be the mayor's residence in Lavington. And uh, I know this particular issue even uh, uh, got into some crosshairs with the clerk of your uh, assembly. Uh, I don't know how far that matter has gone and if at all this headline is accurate. No, we stopped the, the whole process. I mean, I, you know, it's a very interesting process. This process stopped in January how my clerk brought it back in June, he knows better. But it never came to the board, so it is nothing. But for now, I think uh, what uh, SRC should do, uh, and it is just a circular to just say, we are giving, you, we are giving counties more time to look at the proposals they had brought in, because this thing of houses and mansions, uh, it has been an issue. And I know even Senate has spoken on it. Uh, they said we first, uh, 
look at the Gazette notice and mm -hmm. if it's possible, the Gazette it for, and, and, and ensure things are put in properly because you are, you are not even told. I think it, it should be a uniformity of mm -hmm. these houses, first of all. Yes. Uh, if you want to do for the speaker, for the deputy uh, governor, for the governor, let's have uniformity exactly. in all the, con okay. uh, on all the yeah. counties. And then from there also, the counties should look for their own land first. Mm -hmm. Not say you are buying also land and uh, you are in your county. And the challenges, are, land the for challenges have been uh, very well documented on this page eight, page nine, and page ten of the standard this morning, including the fact that some counties do have land, but the land has already been grabbed. Uh, <laughs> then they take back their <laughs> grabbed land. Yes. Even my governor is taking back grabbed land. Yes. I saw him going, even taking one at Gigiri and uh, driving in fire uh, extinguishers. Yes. Wow. And he has said also his building is coming down. Mm -hmm. So he's showing example that if you have taken anything, your building has to come down also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think this whole issue about housing for governors, speakers, and county assembly <laughs> actually goes to the problem we are discussing today, corruption. Yes. If you remember, there was in fact a house for the mayor from colonial days. Mm -hmm. There was a house for the governor from colonial days. Who, for if example, you, lives if in If we this talk house about right Wasingishu now. County, which I know intimately, the entire land next to the Moy Teaching Referral Hospital, there was a house for the district commissioner, for the there, there was la, there were houses, palatial homes that mm -hmm. has all have yes. always been there. Unfortunately, they were all grabbed. Mm -hmm. So what happened? By the time the county governments were coming in, all those houses that the government initially owned, if you think about um, <coughs> Nairobi, the, the, the Kenya Railways owned many palatial houses, which were still within the government, which means there was, the government has suffi had sufficient houses for all their officers mm -hmm. to use. But look what happened. And that's why we, this has to stop now in wow. this country. Okay, mm -hmm. finally. A house for 50 million is an amazing oh, house. Amazing. Whether in Homa Bay or Nairobi. So what I would mm -hmm. say, They're putting houses at 100 million. and whatever mm -hmm. is just really hogwash. Mm -hmm. Let us reduce houses to a reasonable amount. Our governors and deputies need to stay well, uh, but modest, knowing that w what country we are coming uh, you know, from. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I'd want to say that the president needs to stay focused on this war. He has the country behind him. We are, as we have said, you don't need uh, those people who are purporting to be your They're friends. They were never. Friends. They're leeches. <laughs> they are not friends. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Billy Odiambo MP, Suba North, uh, Gladys mm -hmm. Postule, Woman Representative Wasin Gishu, and uh, Beatrice Elache, Speaker, County Assembly of Nairobi, helping us look at the issues behind the headlines this morning. And as, as I had said earlier, uh, Wahiga Moro will be hosting, will be sitting down with Njeru Katango, veteran politician, to discuss a lot more uh, with regard to the conduct of members of our National Assembly, given the kind of allegations of bribery that we see. Uh, well, time now for a break. Remember, the discussion continues online at Citizen TV Kenya's our Twitter handle. Use the hashtag Daybreak. You can also text us on 22422.